Hello friends and welcome back to part three of the endocrine system here at Acne Beautiful with Morgan Elizabeth. Thank you so much for joining me again today as we dive deep into the hormones of our body and how they relate to our skin. Mm. So if you're just tuning in for the first time, great, great, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you found this channel. Please go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. Give us a thumbs up and comment. I'm so excited to hear about what you guys are experiencing with your own hormones in relation to your own acne beautiful journey. And if you have any questions about this material, I will do my very, very best to provide you with a well-researched and understandable answer. So I encourage all comments and I really look forward to hearing from you guys as well. Now, if you're tuning in again and you know somebody that this material may resonate with, please go ahead and share the message. Your kindness helps me spread my own kindness through this message with Acne Beautiful. And it really does mean so, so much to me having your support because I just cannot do this without you all. So let's jump into the last three hormones or hormone systems within the endocrine system. We're gonna talk about progesterone, adrenal, and thyroid hormones. So progesterone's on its own, adrenal has different things in there, and thyroid has some different things in there as well. First off, we have progesterone. So we've already talked a little bit about progesterone as we've talked about estrogen because they work in relation to each other. Progesterone is really just the other female hormone and it has a lot of cool jobs, including normalizing blood sugar levels, which we want to keep in mind here. It helps regulate our menstrual cycle, helps us have a healthy pregnancy, and it contributes to things like anti-anxiety and anti-depression. Super duper duper important. Also, progesterone helps bring to life the good qualities of estrogen. It really helps accentuate that good estrogen, E, what was that now? E3? And downplays some of the um, stronger estrogens that we want to try and avoid, E1 and E2. I hope I'm not mixing them up now. Anyway, it's a very, very important hormone and when we have low progesterone in relation to estrogen, because remember, they always work in tandem and there's a ratio there that is ideal, that can contribute to acne. So let's say that one more time, low progesterone in relation to estrogen can also contribute to acne. How does this happen? It happens because having that low progesterone in relation to estrone, estrogen bleh, <laughs> can increase our insulin levels in our blood. And what happens when that happens? Hmm. So remember, progesterone helps regulate our insulin levels. And if we have low progesterone, which can contribute to acne, and can actually have a different effect where it increases our insulin levels. And if you remember correctly from last week's video, IGF-1 release is highly um, linked to our insulin levels as well. So when that happens and we have high insulin, high IGF-1 factor, we can also have excess androgenic activity in the skin. Now, androgenic activity, we're talking about the male sex hormones here. When that happens, it really amplifies testosterone's conversion to DHT in the skin. So we haven't really talked about DHT much, but let's just jump into that for a quick second. DHT is just another male sex hormone, dihydrotestosterone. And 
It's linked to some male traits like the lower voice, the deeper voice, um, hair growth, and um, unwanted hair loss, in this case, hair loss in both men and women, amongst other things. Now, about 10% of testosterone in both men and women is converted to DHT with the help of a little enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. Now, we're going to remember this enzyme for a second here, okay? So, normal progesterone levels in relation to estrogen can prevent, prevent 5-alpha reductase enzyme from converting testosterone to DHT, thus preventing acne. A big woohoo right there. So why is it important to achieve normal progesterone levels? Well, when our progesterone is normal in relation to estrogen, it can help prevent, stop, that little enzyme, the 5-alpha reductase, from converting testosterone to DHT, thus preventing acne. Now, we've already said that about 10% of testosterone is converted to DHT in all men and women. So, as an acne-prone individual, we are certainly not looking to have more of that, are we? No, we are not. Now let's talk about hormonal contraception for a second. A little side note here. Depending on the type and the hormone amounts in the contraception that you use, this can swing things in either direction. Um, you can have more estrogen and less progesterone, for example. So I only put that in there as a note so that you can really take time to not only understand what your hormone levels are, prior to using hormonal contraception, but choose a hormonal contraception that is right for you according to where your hormone levels are at. And there are so many choices out there. If it's something you decide that you want to use, please be informed, do the research, get your own hormone levels checked if you can, and then really read up on the different hormone levels available to you in the different products. Okay. Because we all know what it's like to come off those things and it's, it's not fun. Or maybe we don't all know, but I know what it's like to come off those things and it's not fun. So the flip side there, high doses of progesterone in relation to estrogen can also have a negative effect. In this case, an inflammatory effect. Ugh. Contributing to, guess what? Breakouts. Geez, is anyone getting this? It's so crazy. Progesterone, it spikes just before a woman's period. So if your ratio to estrogen is off in any way, it can bring forth that premenstrual acne that we all know a little too well. Okay, so there's progesterone for us. You might need to rewind a little bit and listen to those important parts again, especially where I've mentioned anything about blood sugar. Because <sighs> remember, progesterone also helps regulate blood sugar. So not just the food we eat regulates blood sugar, but hormones like progesterone do it too. <laughs> Let's talk about cortisol and the adrenal glands. Stress, anyone? Cortisol and DHEAS are released from our adrenal glands when we're stressed out, man. So you may recall DHEAS is an androgen, just another fancy word for a male sex hormone. It's a precursor to that testy testosterone. So high levels of DHEAS, guess what? can be linked to freaking acne. <laughs> Cortisol and adrenaline, that little gremlin too. The stress hormones, mm, they are part of our body's fight or flight mechanism. We all know what that is. We've all heard of it. 
Since that's used to get the heck out of here when something is bugging us, its purpose really involves breaking down the different tissues in the body so that we have the energy we need to quite literally run away, even if we don't have to actually run away. Um, no joke, guys, no joke. Stress takes a huge, huge, huge amount of energy to convert. I don't know about you guys, but I don't really need stress breaking down my bodily tissues. Okay, here's another thing about cortisol and stress. Cortisol increases inflammation as well. And here we go again. <sighs> Blood sugar levels, which does what? Leads to IGF-1 release. Hmm, notice a pattern here, anyone? Let's sing this little song. Stimulates more androgen sensitivity in the skin and it also suppresses the immune system. So let's rewind that for a quick second. What happens with cortisol? A lot of things. It breaks down our body's tissues to use for energy to deal with the stress, even if the stress is not a lion coming at you. Okay, cortisol also increases inflammation in the body. And here we go again, it's related to the increase in our blood sugar levels. Why are those two linked? Because when we're under stress and we need to use energy to get out of a situation, whether it's physical energy to run or just energy to deal with the stress, we need energy from somewhere. And how do we get energy? We get energy from our food, which I already ate, and our blood, sugar, our blood sugar will raise from the food that we eat. Now, if we haven't eaten anything recently, we can also increase our blood sugar levels because cortisol will come in there and do the job for us and increase our blood sugar levels right? So what does that mean? Our blood sugar levels increase. What happens in tandem with that? Our IGF-1 is also increased and released. We all know this pattern already. I keep harping away on it. When those two things happen, we also have increased androgenic activity in the skin. That conversion of testosterone to DHT, we don't want it. Excess androgens, excess acne. Damn this stuff. Cortisol can accentuate the action of the bad estrogens as well. Oh my gosh, remember them, E1 and E2? That's right, I did have that right. <laughs> yeah, we don't want that either because what can happen there is they actually take up home, those bad estrogens, those aggressive estrogens, they take up home in our progesterone's receptor sites. Now, a receptor site is really just the home, if you will, of the hormone. It's where it can lock into place and do its job. Now, if we have these bad estrogens, these more aggressive estrogens moving in on progesterone's home and taking up residence there, we have less room for progesterone to actually get into its home receptor site and do its job. So there's a really interesting thing that can happen here. It's very complicated. So we can have seemingly normal progesterone levels. Well, it's not that complicated. <laughs> we can have seemingly normal progesterone levels, but still have symptoms of low progesterone if, if, if cortisol the stress hormone is blocking progesterone from getting into its home receptor site because the more aggressive estrogens are taking up home in those receptor sites because the cortisol is higher than it should be. <sighs> Maybe it is complicated. So damn it, stress causes a lot of problems. And in my opinion, it's a big old user. 
It uses everything. It uses nutrients, energy, creates inflammation, increases androgens, and estrogen dominance with those aggressive estrogens in a weird, convoluted, but nevertheless real way. Hmm. And we don't want it. And we don't need it. And we can get rid of it. <laughs> First, we have to understand it though. So people with chronic stress, and I'm talking about years and years and years of chronic stress, have something that's called adrenal fatigue. And many of us have heard this term thrown around before. What happens here is the brain and other factors influence the adrenal glands to stop releasing their normal levels of adrenal hormones. Now, it may seem like a good thing to stop releasing cortisol, but you do not want your adrenal glands to quit on you. You don't want anything in your body to quit on you. In this case, D-H-E-A-S and cortisol levels can be very, very, very low or non-existent. <sighs> Now, you could also have stress that is quite chronic. It's not year after year after year after year, potentially. But you could be testing for um, cortisol levels and test very, very high cortisol and high DHEAS levels. And this can also be a problem for your adrenal glands and potential adrenal exhaustion down the road, not to mention acne. All right, so we've talked about the adrenal glands. Now let's talk about the thyroid glands and then we will have wrapped up our beautiful, wonderful, happy, healthy, useful endocrine system, AKA our hormones, excuse me. Okay, the thyroid glands, the thyroid hormones, the last one on our list. Okay. So it's a very important little gland in the front of your throat. The doctor checks it for you when you have your annual checkup. It controls our metabolism. Um, it's ruled by the pituitary gland in the back of the brain. Now remember the interconnectedness of the nature of our hormone glands and hormones themselves. This is why we're talking about the thyroid gland. The thyroid sends out hormones to tell your cells about the speed at which they should process things or make fuel or energy. For example, it can tell your body how fast to burn fat and it can also determine your body's temperature as well. So when your thyroid is operating at peak condition, guess what? You feel energetic. You feel good. Woo, we all like energy. So the ovaries have receptors on them for thyroid hormones, which is pretty cool because if you've had your thyroid hormone removed, you still have some receptor sites on your ovaries. This plays a role in egg development and contraception, but we're not talking about that today. An under-functioning thyroid can mm, be linked to menstrual and or fertility problems. And you know what else? Acne. <laughs> so crazy as it seems, we have another player in the acne world right here. Thyroid and acne are not directly related per se, but the thyroid is so, so, so important to our endo endocrine health and to our normal bodily functions, as we already mentioned, things like metabolism and body temperature. It can have a huge effect on other hormonal elements that can cause acne. Interconnectedness, right guys? Woo, a big old web, a puzzle. I might sit here and say, grr, like, I can't even understand this stuff. I'm just going to give up on it. But bear with me, guys. I trust that you will be a lot better off going forward in your journey with this information. And you just take what pertains to you. You don't need all of it.
Okay, but this is really why the thyroid hormone is included in this discussion, and the thyroid gland produces different thyroid hormones, which we're not going to get into today, but there are a collection of them. Um, yeah, we just can't leave it out. And why would we want to leave it out? Poor little thyroid, we want to include it too. So acne and symptoms of thyroid problems, usually hypothyroid or an underactive thyroid, it's really worth your attention. And if this is you and your thyroid comes in as an underachiever at the moment, correcting this imbalance can often clear acne on its own. So your acne could be coming from so many different sources, including different sources in relation to your hormones. Yeah, guys, we did it. We did it. We made it to the end of the endocrine system. And I'm so proud of you guys for hanging in there with me through all of this crazy information. How excited are you now that you are not only equipped to better understand your amazing, sexy endocrine system and your amazing hot hormones, now you can really put to test your own work on your own skin. But before we get there, we're going to jump into part four, where we get to dive deep into the different symptoms of acne related to hormonal imbalances. So you get to see all the different symptoms in relation to the different hormones that we talked about and kind of help create a map for yourself and place yourself on that map. And guess what? You're probably going to have some overlap and that's okay and that is normal. It actually doesn't make things more complicated because everything is so interconnected. It helps you um, pick an area to start with and then have like a secondary area to work with going forward. So overlap in the world of acne and hormones is extremely common and it's okay. It's something we just need to learn to work with. Um, but it really can help us have a smoother journey day to day throughout that entire monthly cycle. And yeah, I've talked a lot about the ladies here, but a lot of this applies to the gentlemen as well too. Okay, especially if you've heard me say anything about testosterone. Yeah, not the other San Francisco treat. I do like to make a joke about that, testosterone-y, um, but really testosterone and its conversion to DHT and how it increases androgenic activity in the skin and makes us acne prone folks more sensitive or susceptible to that androgenic activity in the skin. I know it's a lot, but I think this is probably as straightforward as I could make it. And you guys did it and we did it together. So thank you so much. Endocrine system done. Typical symptoms of hormonal acne coming at you next week. It's going to be fun and exciting and way, way more personal to you. But nevertheless, the endocrine system is personal to each of us too. So you have the foundation. Now go forth and experiment with yourself and be kind, be gentle, be loving with your beautiful, beautiful self. You've only got one of you. I'll see you all next week. I love you so much. Goodbye for now.